Good morning, reefers. I'm Daniel. If you're new to this channel, we are everything reefing and then some. So thank you for joining us today. I did want to talk about making these rocks. I know this sculpture, if you watched some of our previous vi videos recently, that this was just a new design. I've been messing with it. So we wanted to make a cave and just show you guys the process of mixing that stuff and how I do it, you know, adding the texture and different things like that. So I'm going to put a cave here and then I'm also gonna make a little sculpture or something up here and then I'll turn that rock sideways. So the fish do love it. Um, so, sorry, Google's trying to talk to me. Um, always eavesdropping at damn Google. But, but anyway, so I definitely wanna design stuff, make it more accessible for holding. Like the sculptures will start to adapt to the frags and to the shapes of the corals. So, I will make something for torches for LPS, something interesting. But anyway, the point is, I don't have time to do that today. I had a hot glue gun to uh, foam, and I'm going to show you guys that whole process of shaping it into a rock. So I'm going to do that, and then I just wanted to talk about, yeah, I haven't even cleaned this glass yet either. I wanted to talk today about just random coral deaths. A lot of people, you know, they go crazy testing their water. and they're very, very um, cautious about their water quality, but they don't really understand sometimes why they lose their corals. You know, they always think something with the water, maybe they didn't wait long enough, their lights aren't strong enough. Um, and I kind of just wanted to talk to people about like, looking at your coral and observing the tissue and knowing, you know, just when that coral is in stress. So, um, like I said, today I'm just kind of like rambling because I had so much to do, and summer just seems to be that way around here. I don't know why. It's so busy, even traffic seems to be crazy. But, I just went to the gym earlier. That's why this video, I'm taking it late in the day. I, ha I have to make time for the gym. The reef's important, work's important, family's important, but um, I started putting the gym first lately. I was getting disappointed in myself. So, build a better reef and a better body uh, with me. So. All right, people don't always understand what's wrong with their corals and why they're dying. You know, maybe their skimmer wasn't big enough. They hear about a new thing like, you know, some kind of awesome hang on the back. Uh, what the heck are those things called now? I can't even remember now. Everyone's always going crazy about those macro algae scrubbers. Algae scrubber, yeah. So they want to add algae scrubbers now, you know. There's different things. You don't have a skimmer, you don't have a skimmer, blah, blah, blah. But the real important thing is balancing your system, okay? And knowing what corals you have before you add them. You know, do a little research. It's tough, but the whole fun I think about this hobby is learning and, and creating and building and so many people are just rushing and, and going for the next best thing and upgrading their equipment before they really had a chance to learn about their equipment from day one. So. I mean, the wave functions, man, I've seen some amazing results in tanks just by timing a correct wave. I mean, bouncing the current off the other current is what gives it that beautiful tide and really cleans your corals. So, I mean, this is really important and sometimes, you know, we overlook these things and we just want to get stuff in, get stuff going and we don't really take the time to assess our reefs. So, I'm changing my racks in here. I noticed recently I just had a bunch of pumps go down and maybe it's because they were broken before and I just didn't check them you know regularly um, you know the calcium builds up I'm gonna dip them in vinegar and try to get them back in shape but a lot of my pumps just gave up on me you know what I mean my mp40 died and then the flow goes down and if you don't see that I mean that really 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 affects your tank I mean, I, I was so upset when I started seeing, you know, algae appearing in my tank, and then I look over and, of course, my MP40 was dead. So, so yeah, so you got to watch stuff, paying, observing. You know, people go on vacation this summer, and I keep hearing horror story after horror story, people getting home, and their tank, all their corals are dead. And I'm like, damn, you know, people just don't see things that normal reefers are, are trained to see you know what I mean you're in this hobby a long time you're just trained to notice things right away you know I ask people hey how's everything going They're like oh perfect and I'm like really but, but you know we can't blame people 
it, it is a, a very precise hobby sometimes and you really do need to know what you're doing so when you have someone watch your tank you do have to be careful you know and don't blame them or kill them uh, stuff happens so anyway so I originally started this video today talking about why your corals die and you know the pumps and water flow and this and that and I, I, one of the reasons why for stores and like I said I, I'm redoing my fish tanks so I want to do a closed loop design on all the new frag systems I'm done with pumps because they just all break they all build up coraling if I go with something like a, a closed loop design and even if I have PVC coming in through the racks you know out of the back for the return lines I'll be getting all that extra flow in between the racks the more racks I add the harder it is to get flow in there so I am going to actually remove some racks just to increase the space for the water to flow through and in turn I should get healthier corals just from doing that so and I went through my whole refugium I've started picking out handfuls and handfuls of macroalgae it was just disgusting um, I don't know if you guys want to see it but yeah there's the trash can it's filled with it. The sink I would have to clean out. All that red is embarrassing. I don't like seeing it in my tank. Um, but as long as it's in the refugium, it's you know it's not in the display. It's not a big deal. So I, I don't really mind so much. You know, it doesn't bother me. But I also just changed the GFO and the carbon today, and topped off some of the dosing. So I am going to talk about some other topics this week, um, like the lighting schedules for the radions and also about dosing um, so I'll probably do those Thursday and Friday or something for you guys but today just kind of rambling with you um, hopefully you're chilling you had a good day and this is just a little icing on the cake talking about fish tanks so there you guys go feel free to leave your question or comments below as always thanks for watching and happy reefing um, yeah share your experiences of your tissue uh, your corals, if you have something to share, something you want to question on, every coral does have a different place that it, it, it's going to be happy with. So, as I go back to my previous point, sorry guys, I thought I was done, we're back on. Um, the rocks are so important, so, so important to a, a successful tank. Water flow, everything. So, we'll come back, discuss this more on another time, but as always, Thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Don't forget to service your equipment. Just testing out some new stuff, as always. I'm going to edit this video real quick for you guys, and then I'll... Uh... If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share with a friend, and thank you for being part of the Coralus community.